Continuing with the camera script, now we've added rotation. There's a few errors here I'm going to address in this video. So the first thing is that uh, we can go too close to the side of the terrain and the terrain barriers are just magic numbers in our script. So instead of using these magic numbers, where are they? Here they are. So we've defined our limits to the camera using these uh, integer values basically, or these floats. So instead of doing that, I'm going to automatically work out the size of the terrain and then apply some padding so we won't be able to go right to the side of the map. And the second thing is to do with our uh, boundaries. So I can enter the boundary, I can't go in inside it. So, But if I rotate the camera and try and hit the boundary, I get stuck. I'm pressing the arrows here to try to move the camera but nothing's happening because um, once we actually rotate the camera the local axes are now different from the world axes and we check if we're over the boundaries using the world axes so they're different. So we're going to use a function to convert the local position into the world position and, uh, and just clean up a few more bits of code. So if I go back into my script I'm just going to apply a few more public variables so what we need here is a public terrain and I'm going to call this world terrain so I'm going to bring in the, the main terrain from our game and a couple more things I'm going to make another public float world terrain padding alright so this padding I'm going to make 25 units my map's not very big so I can't apply a big amount of padding so if I zoom out there's, the padding's going to be across each side side of the terrain so our camera will not be able to travel right to the side, we won't be able to see as much black skybox. Okay guys, so feel free to add your own skybox if you like, if you if you really feel it's a big issue in your game. So I'm going to drag the terrain onto the script and now we can access all, the, the, all of the terrain data and if we wanted to manipulate the terrain. Okay, so we're going to apply this padding inside our limits, the camera limits. So instead of saying 10 units the, for the left limit in the game, I'm going to say world terrain, terrain, transform position x, okay so this just gets the x value of the terrain which is at the side of it, so it's there, the x value. Okay and we're going to add on the padding as well, so world terrain padding. So now on the left side of the terrain we move inwards 25 units and that's going to be our boundary. Okay guys, so we're going to apply it to each of the sides. So on the right side we use something different. Instead of saying transform position, we're going to say world terrain terrain data. Okay, then we can access the size of it and the x value. And this time, because it's the opposite side, we're going to minus the world terrain padding. Okay, and uh, the last two values are similar. We can just copy these, but the top limit is going to be in the z-axis because it goes across the terrain. And uh, we're going to minus the world padding again, go back 25 units, and the bottom limit is similar to the left limit. Okay, so we're getting the transform Z this time, and plus the world terrain padding. Okay, simple as that. Let's see if this works before we continue. So now I shouldn't be able to move within 25 units of the side of the terrain. Move into the side, boom, it stops here this time, so 25 units away. And that's cool. Okay, so the second thing is to deal with this issue here of the axis problem. So I'm going to jump into my script. Within the late update, I'm going to change a couple of uh, names. So I've called this camera desired move, and this gets the translation which we want to move to. Instead of calling it camera desired move, I'm just going to call it desired translation. Very easy to remember this one. Okay, I'm just going to change these values. So, is the desired position over the boundaries? This is what we need to change. I'm going to find it here. So, I've called this desired position. I should have called it desired translation. I'm going to change that now. Okay, so we need to change this value here because we need to work out the the desired position in world units rather than local uh, axes. So, I'm just going to say. We're going to use a function here called transform point. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of it. It just converts a local position uh, to the world position. Okay. We can define this as a vector three. So vector three. I'm going to call this desired world position equals this transform, and we're going to use that that method transform point. Okay, guys. So we're transforming from local into world, and we're going to bring in the desired translation. Okay, so as you can see, we're using our um, our current position in the world, and then we're going to transform that 
into the world axis okay using our desired translation and now we just need to replace this calculation which would be the the position in local units and replace it with the world units so just copying and pasting these things to check if we're over the boundaries okay so a lot cleaner now that's cool so dot x get in the vector 3's x position and for the top and bottom it's the z value okay and now no matter which rotation we apply to our camera it should the limits should be tested correctly so let's rotate 180 boom hit the limit and I can escape it now okay that's all good so the other thing I wanted to do is just tidy up this function here which calculates the desired translation itself so from the previous video we know that we can get the um, the move the desired position via the keyboard and via the mouse I'm going to combine the keyboard and mouse tests in one statement so we can say we can get the key W which is the up and we can also test if we want to move up by with the top limits of the mouse so I'm just going to copy and paste this statement and just move it in here so if we if we're pressing the W key or if the mouse is in the top scroll limit then we're going to move okay so we're going to do, do this for each of the uh, directions so the S would be down that would be the bottom limit just going to quickly do this because we don't want the keyboard to attempt to move in one direction and then the mouse at the same time to, to attempt to move in another one it doesn't really make sense so just going to tidy this up for now so A would be left and left and the right would be D okay and uh, then we can delete this whole thing out alright guys so there's something else we can do to tra dramatically improve this bit of the method I'm going to replace this desired X and Z stuff with a vector 3 so we're going to return instead of defining the vector for free here I'm going to define it at the top so I'm going to define it straight away vector 3 desired translation equals new vector 3 okay so what we can do here we've got the move speed that's all cool and um, we can basically apply the move speed and the direction to the vector 3 using desired translation um, we can say plus equals vector 3 forward when we're pressing upward when we're pressing the W key we want to move forward or we'll input the mouse at the top limit okay times move speed simple as that that's all we need to do so a lot easier to read than using this desired Z and desired X doesn't really make sense okay so instead of saying this we can say desired translation plus equals vector 3 back times move speed and if you wanted to you can times the move speed at the bottom once you've worked out the vector 3 but it's up to you guys um, desired translation again plus equals let's just delete this vector 3 left times move speed and the bottom one you probably guessed right vector 3 right okay guys okay so as you can see we've now condensed the uh, the method into a nice bit of code looks it's a lot easier to read and decide plus equals vector 3 right times move speed ah okay we need to close this bit off okay so we need to close that one off that was, that's why there was an error there okay and then right at the end we can return desired translation okay I think that's all I wanted to do in this video so in the next video I'm going to make the camera's height automatically adjust depending on how bumpy the terrain is so we'll use a, a, a smooth damp function to do that so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully see you in the next video